Hello, my name is Bai. I'm a machine learning engineer and a PhD in natural language processing. In this video, I'll go over some interesting things about serving a streaming speech recognition model. Real-time streaming models are quite different from the typical large language models, and they require some unique techniques to deploy efficiently. Streaming ASR is when the model takes in speech in real time and transcribes it within a second or two. This is different from batch ASR, where the user uploads a file and gets all of it transcribed. Long-time viewers of this channel might have seen my video on whisper streaming, which takes the OpenAI Whisper model, which is a batch model, and turns it into a streaming model by repeatedly processing windows of audio again and again with some heuristics. This kind of works, but it's not the most efficient, and the latency cannot be guaranteed. In this video, I'll go over the recently released Qtai Moshi model, this is a model primarily designed for real-time dialogue, but it happens to also provide spe streaming speech recognition as one of its capabilities. Recently, they also released the inference server written in Rust to serve these models efficiently. This is one of the first open source implementations of a streaming speech recognition inference server, and in this video, I'll go into the details of how it works. On the topic of streaming speech recognition, I am building VoiceWriter which uses the most accurate streaming speech recognition models to help you write faster. Simply speak your thoughts, and the AI will fix your grammar and add punctuation in real time. It uses advanced speech recognition models, and I use it every day to write things much faster, including my emails and my daily stand-up updates. You can also use our Chrome extension to use VoiceWriter on any website. Try it for free at voicewriter.io. Now back to the video. The Moshi model architecture is a fully duplex model that can listen and talk at the same time, so it doesn't have any separate components for speech-to-text and text-to-speech and reasoning. It's all combined into one model, and there's a lot of things going on here, so I'll maybe cover this in a future video, but for now, what's interesting is that both speech-to-text and text-to-speech are kind of special cases of this model. In the speech-to-text setup, you feed in an audio stream and it generates a text stream with a few frames of delay. Whereas if you do the opposite and you give it a stream of text, you can also ask it to generate a stream of audio, uh, giving you text-to-speech. If we just focus on the speech-to-text setup, it's conceptually not too different from existing architectures for streaming speech recognition. You have a model that basically shifts its context over some audio and generates tokens as it's processed. They released two models for speech-to-text of different sizes, a 1 billion model and a 2.6 billion parameter model. Both of these are quite similar, except one is bigger. Given the user's speech audio, the first thing that happens is it gets processed by a speech encoder called Mimi. This is a fairly small and lightweight model coming in at around 90 million parameters. There's a bunch of things that's happening inside this model, but they're not too relevant for understanding how inference works, so for now you can think of it as a model that takes in speech and turns it into a sequence of semantic audio tokens. This is important because transformers are not very good at handling long sequences of audio input, so it needs to be transformed into a shorter sequence of tokens. If you're familiar with audio encoders like SoundStream and Encodec, this is quite similar. After the audio has been tokenized, the next step is a transformer that turns the audio tokens into text. In a typical large language model, the transformer generates tokens one at a time, autoregressively, but that's not what's happening here. Instead, what happens is, during each frame, one token of audio is fed into the transformer, which generates one token of text. Each frame has a length of 80 milliseconds, or in other words, a frequency of 12.5 frames per second. This is faster than a typical speaking rate, so many of the text tokens will be blanks. Let's do something fun. Given what we know about the model architecture, what do you think would happen to the CPU RAM and the GPU memory um, if we deploy the model and do inference in the following scenarios? First, what if a lot of users come at the same time? Let's say 100 people want to stream their speech-to-text at the same time. Second, what if some users want to talk for a long time, let's say for five hours without stopping? And third, what happens to the server if some users decide to send audio at a speed faster than real-time, let's say two times the real-time speed. If you like, I'll give you a chance to pause the video and think about what will happen. To answer the first two questions, I ran the following experiment. On one terminal, I'm starting the Qtai Moshi server, which is listening to incoming WebSocket connections. On a second terminal, 
I'm starting a Python script, which is gradually ramping up the number of connections from 1 until 64. Each one of these 64 connections is individually streaming an audio file to the server in real time and printing out the results. I then have a third process that checks the CPU and GPU memory usage every second so we can analyze the results. Here's what I found. First of all, the GPU memory. Immediately when it starts, it allocates all the memory that it's ever going to need, which is around 9GB. This depends on the batch size that I configured, which in this case, uh, I set it to 64. This number may be set higher or lower depending on the model you're running and the amount of GPU memory you have, but after it's allocated at the beginning, it doesn't change much. The CPU memory starts going up once we start ramping up the number of connections, up until we get 64 simultaneous connections. At this point, we've hit the maximum load that the server can handle, so any further connections are dropped. But all 64 connections are simultaneously streaming audio to the server in real time, and the amount of CPU and GPU memory does not keep increasing, meaning that this can go on indefinitely. Here's an illustration of what's happening when we run an inference server with a batch size of 4. We have three different clients that are all streaming audio to the server, and the server will store all of the audio yet to be processed in a buffer. Whenever a new client creates a connection, the server needs to scan through the buffer and find an empty slot to put in connection. If there are no empty slots left, then the server is overloaded and the connection has to be dropped. On each step, the model takes in all of the buffers that have audio data and treats it as a batch through the transformer model. This batching takes advantage of the parallel processing capabilities of the GPU. On a forward pass, the model computes a set of token results which have to be unbatched and sent back to the clients. The model also needs to keep track of a stateful working memory for each connection so that when it receives the next audio frame to be processed, it remembers what tokens are already generated and what audio it has already seen. The server also has to handle any connections that are closed or stop sending data so the slot can be cleaned up and reused for future connections. The ability to stream indefinitely without running out of memory requires some special engineering. For a normal LLM inference, every time the model generates a token, it needs to look at all the previous tokens that have been provided in a prompt and has been generated. During this process, it accumulates activations for all of its tokens while it's generating in what's called the KV cache. If you're unfamiliar with the KV cache, I have a video here that explains it in detail. Anyways, in LLMs, the growing KV cache means that there is a maximum sequence length that the GPU can support before it runs out of memory. This is not ideal in streaming speech recognition to have a maximum length because clients might want to stream for a really long time. But architecturally, this is not a problem because the model only needs to look at the last minute or so of audio. So it can evict or clear out the parts of the KV cache that's no longer needed because it's more than a minute old. This way, the memory containing the old KV cache can be reused and the GPU never runs out of memory. One potential problem is, what if the client decides to send data at a rate that's faster than real time? I ran the experiment again, but this time sending it at twice the real time speed. And what happens is the CPU memory just keeps on increasing without bound, which it didn't do in the real time case. The model is set up to consume the audio buffer at a rate that is real time. So if the client sends audio faster than real time, then the buffer will fill up faster than it can be consumed. This could eventually lead the server to run out of memory and crash, which is why many speech API providers like Assembly AI really don't like it if you send audio faster than real time. Now let's take a look at the economics of streaming ASR inference. The official documentation claims that H100 GPU can process 400 streams in real time. Let's assume we can rent these GPUs from the cloud at a cost of $3 per hour. Each GPU can handle 400 streams at the same time, and realistically, we can't match demand to capacity perfectly, so let's assume a utilization rate of 50%. Doing the math, this comes down to about 1.5 cents per hour to run inference on this model at scale. Currently, the cheapest provider for a similar streaming speech recognition service is Assembly AI's Universal Streaming at a cost of 15 cents per hour. So the Qtai Moshi deployment setup would be about 10 times cheaper. Nevertheless, the architectural requirement to hold the model state in the GPU memory for the duration of the connection means that streaming models will generally be less efficient than batch ASR, where an hour of audio can be processed in a matter of seconds. 
but an hour of real-time streaming audio will require holding the GPU memory for an hour. Because of the high cost of GPU memory, serving the streaming ASR model will be an order of magnitude more expensive than serving a comparable open source batch transcription model using cloud GPUs. How does streaming speech recognition inference compare against large language model inference engines like VLM? Overall, I think it's much simpler for several reasons. First of all, there's no need for multi-GPU setups. The largest speech recognition models right now are around 1 to 2 billion parameters, which can easily fit on a single GPU. But maybe at some point we'll have multi-GPU models for speech recognition. A second reason why it's easier is because all the requests are kind of uniform in nature. What I mean is they all send audio to the server at the same real-time rate. Because of this, the server is able to predict the total memory that it will need and allocate it at startup. There's no need to deal with requests that have wildly different sequence lengths, which require engines like VLM to constantly be rebatching sequences and allocating and deallocating memory because the sequence generation length is so unpredictable. In speech recognition, there's also no difference between the prefill and decoding phases, which have quite different compute and memory requirements, so modern inference engines tend to handle them separately but this complexity is not a factor in streaming models. One disadvantage that makes these models more complex to serve than LLMs is the model having state and connections potentially going on for hours and hours because LLM inference requests tend to finish in under a minute. Streaming models also usually have pretty strict real-time latency requirements, especially in real-time voice agent systems where a delay of a second or two will be very noticeable. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into a streaming speech recognition inference server that is suitable for production use. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. You can ask me anything in the comments, and I will respond to all of them. That's it. Goodbye.